Hey foodie, so first and foremost, I would like to give a huge shout out to my new subscribers. Welcome to my channel, guys. Um, I'm going to assume that a lot of you have come from other channels when you were watching the Portland Veg Fest blog, so maybe from the Veggie Nuts, um, or Veggie Nuts, Banana Wisdom, or Team Broccoli. So uh, wherever you came from, however you found me, welcome and thank you for subscribing. And because of all you lovely people, I have reached over 600 subscribers. Like, wow. Like, it was not too long ago that I had 500, and all of a sudden I have over 600. So I'm, like, super, super jazzed about that. So thank you so much for subscribing and liking and commenting and sharing and all that great stuff. So uh, what we're going to do today here in just a little bit is I'm going to show you a little bit of food prep that I do. Um, so I can make easy meals during the week, uh, specifically for my lunches for work. Um, I just make like a big pot of stuff and then I put them in containers, stick them in the fridge and that way it's a really easy grab and go. I don't got to worry about the night before, um, what to make, what to eat. And then also it's nice to have stuff prepped in the fridge and in the freezer for when you are having cravings or you're super hungry and you don't want to just grab the crap food, you don't want to go out and buy junk food, you don't want to spend the money, whatever the case might be, you always have something on hand. Um, yeah, so, all right guys, so let's get started. All right, so first you may notice that my little uh, brown rice blend that I make a lot is running a little low, so I've got to mix some more up. And I'm running a little low on ingredients too, so I might not be able to make that much. But I've got some organic um, long grain brown rice. And I've got this uh, quinoa. It's just the regular white quinoa. Doesn't matter which one you use, whatever your favorite one is. And then I've got some black lentils. The original blend that I liked was from Costco and it had black lentils in it. When I first started making it, I made it with green lentils. So now I'm gonna see how it does with the black lentils, see if those come out a little bit more tender. Um, yeah, and let me get that mixed up for you. All right, hopefully you guys can see this pretty well. So first we're gonna start out with the brown rice and that's gonna be one cup of brown rice. And again, multiply this as many times as you need. Okay, so I've got one cup of brown rice. I'm gonna stick it in the jar. Try not to make too much of a mess. Maybe you wanna actually watch the rice fall everywhere so I can sweep that up later. I'll see how much I have left and then I'll probably add in some more. But just to give you guys the initial measurements, my quantities. We've got some black lentils. Now this does say to sort them, so I actually, I think I'm gonna stop the video and I'm gonna go through and sort these. You're supposed to also rinse this. So what you can do once you have this mixed together is before you actually make it in your rice cooker or your instant pot, is just uh, measure out how much you need and rinse it first in some water. So let me go and sort these first. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, and I know it's tedious to do that, and it's really a pain in the ass, but let me show you two reasons why it's a good idea to sort your beans <laughs> and legumes and all that stuff. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see it very well, but in my finger right there is a little pebble, and I found two of them. And sometimes in the beans, there's some rocks, and I'd rather not uh, break my teeth. So take the time to sort your beans, whatever kind you get. All right, now that I've made a total mess putting these back in there, by the way, the easiest way to put these back in your measuring cup is to pour all the beans onto like a paper towel or a cloth napkin or something, and uh, just funnel it back in and not, you know, it's all over my counter and everything. Anyways, so that's a quarter cup of black lentils. And last, we've got some quinoa and a quarter cup of quinoa. I'm going to need to sweep real good after this. Okay. 
So that's your basic uh, measurements. It's one part black lentils, one part quinoa to four parts of brown rice. Looks really pretty, so now I'm just gonna give it a good shake. So just shake it up till it's really well mixed together, and then each time before I use it, I give it another quick shake just to make sure it's all really well distributed. Um, and again, rinse this before you use it, that way you get off any of the factory dust and crap. And then also quinoa, um, you're supposed to rinse quinoa before you cook it to remove some of the bitter flavor. All right guys, this is the rice cooker I have. Yes, I still use my rice cooker because sometimes I wanna cook rice and use my Instant Pot at the same time. And this rice cooker comes with this little measuring cup um, you use the same basic measurements. It's uh, one part rice to two parts water, so that's all I'm going to do. What I actually do is I use um, just a tad more than two parts water, not, not a lot. So let's say you use... Um, all right, so you don't have to just stare at an empty cup while I'm talking to you. Uh, when I do the brown rice mixture that I'm making, um, for example-ish, you'll have to play with it yourself. Um, I use, let's say, one cup of the brown rice mixture to about two and a quarter cups of water. Just a little bit more water than you normally would for white, for white rice. That seems to work out good for me, and that's how I like it, so that's what I do. Alright guys, so I basically have my two cups of rice in here with the water, and I just... You can see there's a line here. There's this line right here that's for the two cups of water, and then I... Um, just bring it just above the line if you guys have an aroma cooker. Uh, there's nothing else in here but water and my rice blend. So no salt, no seasoning, no oil, no nothing. Um, I figure I'm going to maybe add flavoring to this later possibly, so there's no reason to put any flavoring in it now. So I add the flavoring later. Let's close the lid. It's plugged in. And I'm going to do it on the brown rice function. Uh, the white rice function leaves the lentils just a little bit undercooked. The brown rice function leaves the brown rice for me just a little bit overcooked. So I'm trying to find that fine balance and this is the first time I've used the black lentil so fingers crossed that um, this works. And then also I have had many people suggest and I'm going to do this next time uh, I buy stuff is to use sprouted lentils. Um, that might help them cook faster since they're already sprouted. Um, and then sprouted uh, beans and stuff are very nutritious for you anyways, and they're easier on your digestion. So that is something else to take into consideration. Next is the da 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 Instant Pot. And now we are going to prep some Japanese sweet potatoes. So these are my absolute, absolute favorite sweet potatoes in the whole wide world. They are super sweet, a lot sweeter than your traditional ones. Um, I get these obviously at Trader Joe's. For me, these are the first sweet potatoes that I actually eat the skin on. And that's like big for me because I usually peel the skin off my potatoes, but now I'm learning to uh, love the skin and not do that. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, Trader Joe's carries these, not all the time. Just check your um, specialty grocery stores, Whole Foods, Sprouts, Central Market, things like that. Maybe your regular grocery store carries these as well, so hopefully that's the case. Later. So right now I'm going to wash a bunch of these up and get them in the Instant Pot. Um, I put the rack at the bottom and I put in one cup of water. And depending on the size, usually 12 minutes with a natural pressure release is plenty of time and they get like super creamy and yummy and delicious. Um, if you have some that are a little bit bigger, you can either cut those in half um, or just set it for like another minute or two longer. I mean, these can't get overcooked in my opinion. They just stay like super freaking creamy and delicious. All right, so let me get those in and going. Here they are in all their beautiful glory. So some of these weren't very big, but they were like super long. So I just cut them in half um, or broke them in half. And that's as many as I'm gonna do uh, for this batch. Again, they're so fast to make that um, I'll make some more again in a couple of days, but this will be enough for some snacks and a couple of meals at work. So let's get the lid on. Hmm. So the little, you got to check every once in a while, see my lentils all over. This sometimes doesn't, uh, isn't always snug in, so you got to push it in to make sure it's in. Now my pot's on. Let's make the noise. Yay. And then make sure your vent is to ceiling, not venting, ceiling. Just push it all the way over. <laughs> and 
And then we are going to do, where are you? Manual. And you know what? I'll just leave it at 14 minutes because that's what it was on. Uh, I don't see it being a problem. Like I said, I could probably do 12 minutes, but I'm just going to leave it at 14 and see what happens. So, um, and again, once this is done, I'm going to do natural pressure release and probably not even check it till the rice is done. And the rice is going to be about 45 minutes. So we'll be back and I'll show you what everything looks like. And uh, maybe I'll snack on some of it because I'm a little bit hungry. And just another, another quick thing that I do to prep is I always make sure that I have some frozen veggies in the freezer because you don't want the fresh ones to go to waste and quite honestly mine do sometimes so I'd rather have the frozen ones ready to go. Um, I'm going to hopefully go to Costco and get big bags of the organic ones but this is just the steam bags from um, Target and they are like 90 cents a bag so it's really cheap. And then this is the organic peas from Trader Joe's and I always have you know extra bags of that on hand because we just love peas and my um, Euro Mystic Lizard loves peas. It's a good treat for him. And my kitty Tiffany loves peas, so it's a good treat for her. So it's a yummy sweet treat for everybody. Other things to keep prepped in your freezer are some bags of beans or containers of beans. I made these refried beans in the Instant Pot, and then I just freeze two cups at a time for my husband and I, and then freeze them flat so it doesn't take up a lot of space. Or if you have some nice glass freezer containers, that would be amazing as well. I'm working my way towards that, but you do what you got to do. Um, I try to use glass as much as possible. And if you're wondering what this weird stuff is, this is aquafaba. I didn't want to waste it, so it's just sitting in the freezer to be used at some point in the future. All right, guys, so the sweet potatoes have been done for a while. The rice mixture has two more minutes to go. Um, so I figured I'd just get this open now. You can see that the little... Um, rod has gone all the way down and so there shouldn't be any more pressure so let's see if it'll open up oh what happens for me or what I do is when um, it's done cooking instead of leaving it on the keep warm function I go ahead and turn it off and unplug it uh, that way it comes down from comes down from pressure faster because the heat is off so let's see what the sweet potatoes look like oh yeah totally ready Ooh, there we go this is one of my favorite features you can stick your lid in that little slot so you don't have to find a spot to put it. Are those not just gorgeous? So let me show you how tender these are. Look at that. Just sticks right through them. Sorry for the... <laughs> yeah, that was 14 minutes, guys, and they are like super duper fork tender. Um, what I always do with potatoes is I test with um, forks. I don't test with a knife. Uh, forks over knives, haha. Uh, because a knife is sharper. So a knife's going to go through something that's firm a little bit easier than a fork will. So always test with a fork. And the rice is done. Look at that timing. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm not going to do the keep warm function for this either. I'm just going to turn it off and all the way off. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it smells so good. Look at that. Perfectly cooked. All right, I'm going to taste a little bit for you um, just to see the doneness so you can see how it works. Just a little bit on there. I'm going to let it cool off. I'm really curious how the um, lentils came out because when I did the other, the one that I got from Costco, uh, I don't know if it was parboiled or anything, it didn't say it, um, but I used to use the one at Costco on the white rice function and it turned out perfectly. So we'll see how this one turns out on the brown rice function. <laughs> Good. Oh yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> you can't see this, but sorry. That's one of the lentils. Totally, totally tender. That's awesome. I might have to try it on the white rice function one time just to see so it'll cook faster, but actually, no, I like the brown rice function. The, the brown rice is perfectly tender. It's got a little bit of chew to it. Um, the lentils are totally cooked, and of course the quinoa is cooked because quinoa takes like two seconds to cook anyway, so I'm super duper happy with the results of both of these. Alright guys, here's an example of something I would bring for lunch. I only have 30 minutes at work, 
Um, and I usually bring other snacks to snack on throughout the day. I'll bring applesauce. I will bring some um, like like protein type bars. Um, just depends. Maybe some bananas, crackers, whatever I have on hand. But this will be my lunch. This will actually fill me up pretty quick just because it's so dense. Um, and later on I do get hungry and again I snack when, when I can. But um, I don't want to make myself sick by stuffing myself full. So this is a good little lunch at work for me. Now if I was home having dinner, I'd probably have twice as much because I could take my time to eat, you know, and all that good stuff. But so what I'll do is I'll just make up a few of these little containers, uh, let them cool, put them in the fridge and they are ready to go for me. Um, again, these have nothing on them, no seasoning, no sauce, no nothing. So feel free to add whatever you want. Um, sometimes it's good to add a little bit of sauce or something to the rice or maybe even a little water when you heat it up just so it doesn't dry out or get funky or anything. But other than that, this is pretty tasty just as is or squish all this together. So this will add some moisture back to that and it tastes really good. All right, guys, I hope that this prep video was helpful for you. I uh, just wanted to show you a little bit of what I do. I like to make my lunches very simple for work. Um, it's a lot healthier this way. I'm trying to eat more this way when I can. Um, I'm not going to set any goals or tell you I'm going to do a McDougal starch solution, anything like that. I'm just going to try to eat healthier all the time. So that is my goal right now. So um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Let me know how you like to food prep, what you like to do. And um, I will talk to you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching.